Hello, everybody, and welcome to a post-game reaction podcast. I'm Matthew Bruni, and joining me is Colin Mitchell. It's basketball season. Colin, how you doing? Doing good. I love basketball season. So, and we, it, you know, they also won tonight, so that feels feels good too. Considering football hasn't won in a little while. You didn't have to bring up football on this podcast. That was unnecessary. everyone. Everyone was thinking it. It's okay. Unnecessary, but uh, we are a basketball school. For those who forgot, maybe um, didn't remember why we do this, why mm-hmm. we have all the championship banners and the championship shirts and everything. Mm-hmm. Because North Texas is a basketball school. And here we are talking basketball. North Texas versus Northern Iowa just ended 83-77 to win for the Main Green in overtime. A game where it felt like a lot went on. It felt like it was a yeah. lot of process. It was a new, obviously new head coach, uh, new players, uh, new roles for the returning players. Um, it was just a, it was a lot of new. It felt like, and against the Northern Iowa um, team that was was pretty solid. Like that looked like a you know fringe top one hundred type level team, a team that would have been you know in the upper half of Conference USA last year. Um, so that's a good test to start the season with, and not for nothing, you know, we've seen North Texas lose those types of games in the past, right? Remember Buffalo a few years ago? You go down the list of games, uh, those like tight games. North Texas has lost um, in early early in the season, but North Texas finds a way to win. Uh, what were so? Where do you want to start? What do you want to talk about? Uh, I think the first thing I want to start with is just how much the offense looks different to me um, in terms of them taking a shot that. I normally wouldn't have expected them to take uh, in the past. So, you know, Jason Edwards just kind of pulling up. Ruben pulled up on the second possession of the game for them. And I was like, wow, we're just, this is what we're doing now. Um, Aaron, Aaron Scott pulled up a few times. It's, it's, it's weird to see them not run down the shot clock every possession. And they didn't have, um, last year they averaged 51 field goals a game, attempts a game. They had 57 tonight. So it's not like a huge discrepancy. And they went um, to overtime, yeah. So And they went to overtime. But, but it, it was it was interesting to see the offense work in that way. I don't know the rebounding numbers off the top of my head uh, as far as last year, but they don't 10 offensive rebounds. It didn't feel like they were as prominent as an offensive rebounding force this year, or at Mm -hmm. least in this game, sorry, this game (laughs) in this game. Um, So that that's one thing. And we'll talk about the rebound a little bit in in general, but yeah, I do agree. They played faster. Um, It felt like players had the green light a little bit more. It's I, I, I stand by, I mean, honestly, besides that, team with uh what was it mo gibson and jv on and yeah uh, dang like that was a top like 40 offense in the country i mean this offense is versatile it looks great. like it looks good yeah i mean it helps when you start the game off nine of 11 from three yeah. um the back half the second half they did i texted you i thought they got a little three point happy mm-hmm. uh they end the game 11 of 22 from three so you know 50 percent still is awesome but they were never going to shoot at that nine of 11 clip again right um, 18 to 22 from the line the shooting on this team is like tangible like it's really really good um you have sissoko and uh allen who who can't shoot but other than that everybody else that steps on the floor can shoot the ball and that's something that it's been a while I mean, it's been I mean, obviously you had the Thomas Bell teams where he was at the four. That wasn't the case. Dang, you know, couldn't shoot. Um, you go back. I'd have to think back for, for a while. But yeah, so it's it's an interesting situation. Even last year with Aaron Scott, right? He wasn't pulling threes the way he's pulling tonight. He was four of seven. I mean, so. he wasn't really an offensive threat that that much until the tournament, really, until the end of the last last season. Yeah, and we we said going into the year, like everybody told us, it was like, hey, this is Aaron Scott's team, and he ends the day with twenty six points, eight of fifteen shooting, four of seven from three, six of six from the line, seven boards. He did have four turnovers, um, but he had three blocks and a steal. Um, did he live up to everything you expected? Oh yeah, I mean, and and some. It was it was crazy. To, well, first of all, in the first three free three threes went in, I was like, oh, this is <laughs> this is Ooh. a little this is a little alternative to what we we're, we're used to. And then also, you know, he had the, the couple fadeaways, some big shots, um, and then just him defensively is the same same guy. Um, yeah, I mean, he, he's great. I really like Jason Edwards. Jason Edwards, I think, is going to be very very pivotal in terms of the types of shots he can make. Um, obviously, like we already mentioned. Everyone can shoot pretty much, but he's able to make some tough, tough shots. And we saw, listen, that one, the moving one on the left wing, mm-hmm. moving three in the left wing that he almost went, that went and came out. <laughs> I was, if that dropped, I would have lost my mind. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, like, offense... he feels like Tyler Perry of two years ago, not yeah. last year, yeah. two years ago off the bench where he can just come in and it has the green light. Now it's not the, the difference is this year's team doesn't need, it doesn't, I don't think it needs Jason Edwards the way two years ago, North Texas needed right. Tyler Perry right. to, to score because yeah. JJ Murray was and respect, oh, you know, shout out JJ Murray, but um, yeah, that they have enough scoring without him, but him coming off the bench is like, bam, we have a microwave score just popping right in so yeah and then bugs uh was only one to three from three but his shot looks good um he's i mean cj noland also hit a three i thought he looked pretty i i thought like honestly i thought everybody looked good offensively Um, yes offensively and that's very exciting robert allen uh missed the dunk so he would have been three for four but you know two for four there sissoko oh for three but i'm not too too worried about him uh, right. Because I don't think he'll have to take more than like three or four shots a game, anyways. So I do want to see him as a rim runner, rim runner a bit more. But uh, overall, he's fine. And Stone played eight minutes, which you know I think that's fine. They have seven that I love. I love this seven man rotation. I mm-hmm. you don't need eight, nine, ten players in college basketball in any sport. I mean, in any level of basketball. Uh, you need seven, and I think they have seven. Obviously, the question is like, you know, what if somebody has to miss some time? I think Stone is a viable option. You could plug in there. Yeah. Um, for you know, let's say um, for a CJ Nolan or something like that. But yeah, I, offensively, pretty pretty impressive. I I will say they need to probably get to the rim and fin like get to the rim a little bit more. Um, yeah it felt like they were kind of fading on a lot of their shots maybe, or, you know, contested, but that'll happen against a good team. Uh, They only had 20 points in the paint. So that's kind of why. And when the three point shots falling, you know, you kind of just take what you can get there. Right. What do you think? Uh, Do you want to talk defense? What do you think defensively? At first I was kind of concerned. Uh, I think it was interesting because, you and I obviously didn't have a super amazing or they didn't have a super great shooting percentage in the first half, but it felt like the points that they were getting were just off of dumb things that shouldn't have happened inbound plays specifically to start the game. Yeah. That was annoying to see. And then also just rotations just seemed a little late uh, a few times and that'll, that'll happen with new players like this, but it, it didn't seem as a uh, stalwart of a defense until the end of the game. Uh, I think they locked in pretty good. Northern Iowa f- if ended the game with 42 points in the paint. Um, I thought that was apparent, like you said. 17 second chance points, 14 offensive rebounds. So it's Robert Allen and Sissoko have a lot on their plate. At yeah, five. they're going to have to step up. Um, this this program has gone from Zachary Simmons to Abu, and now those guys are going to have to fill like fill the role collectively, and that's a lot. That's asking quite a bit of them yeah but that's kind of what they're gonna need from them they're gonna have to be much better rebounding and that's obviously on everybody you know you're gonna need the wings to get in their rebound as well but you can't give up 14 rebounds and 17 second chance points and 42 points in the paint like you have to be able to lock down the middle a bit more so that was a concern but like you said there were stretches there were possessions late in the game where they with reuben jones as your head of attack on defense it so was like you are not going to be comfortable. Yeah. And that was like, that showed me enough to where, okay, give this team two months, which is what, you know, the time you have until conference play. And I have no questions that they're going to be a really, really, really good defense. One of the best in the American. Yeah. Ever. No, I mean, Ruben, Ruben just stealing the ball just in the open court was amazing. And then obviously uh, Robert Allen had that breakaway play as yeah. well. I think this team, they're going to be just as good as defensively, but I also think they're going to make more defensive plays on the ball. Uh, obviously, with Ruben being at the forefront of that. Um, I did want to also go back because you, you mentioned uh, offensive rebounding numbers last year. They actually averaged 10 offensive rebounds last year. So uh, mm-hmm. they had 10, or 10, 10.7, sorry, last year. Yeah. And they averaged 10 tonight. Yeah, so. um, this is, I, I think, Bugs looked the part. I mean, physically, we knew the difference last year to this year. Obviously, you'd lose Kai, but. Tyler Perry, you know, 5'11", 5'10", whatever, however tall he was. You go from him to now a lineup with Ruben, uh, Nolan, and Bugs as your backcourt. Yeah. That's pretty freaking intimidating. Yeah. And so that's where I, I get excited because the, the potential is is there for them to be 
suffocating on the perimeter in that way. And so that's um, – I left the game saying, all right, it wasn't a great defensive performance, but A, Northern Iowa runs a lot of like really clean sets and cuts and stuff. So that's probably a hard team to start the season with. Yeah. B, you know, they uh, they got beat on a couple of things that I, I think they're going to clean up. So, um, yeah, <laughs> overall, I, defense wasn't as great as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was, I thought we were going to come into this game and be like, man, Ross Hodge, man, they got the defense figured out, but they yeah. can't score still. Well, but, but like you said, it's more things that you have to – it's it's not like the physical capabilities. It's like you're looking at it, you're like, oh, okay, they can fix that in practice. Oh, okay, yeah. they can fix that in practice. It, it, it was nothing like alarming where I'm like, okay, this is going to be a problem for the year. Yeah. So um, overall, going into – or what, what are the next few games? Nebraska, Omaha. Damn, they only have one game, and then they go to the Charleston Classic. Yeah. So um, they're going to be favored by like – 10, 15, 20 points, whatever, against Nebraska, Omaha. They'll, you know, play well there. And then you got St. John's after that. They're going to have to play better to win a game or two in the Charleston Classic, um, especially against a team of St. John's caliber. But I feel good just in the big picture, to, to wrap this up, in the big picture, I feel good about this team's top-end talent oh, yeah. to compete with everybody in the American right now. I completely agree. I completely agree. All right. Anything else? Nope. Shout out Bug. Shout out Ross. Shout out um A Scott. Shout out everybody that came on our podcast. Shout out Ruben Jones. Mm. Um, who else came on our podcast? I think oh, Jason uh, did. Early. Jason. Jason came on our podcast in the spring. I remember he was watching the film. He was watching film of his teammates in class to <laughs> him in practice. Yeah, so that's the kind of guy Jason Edwards is. Shout out to him. All right, uh, that's all we got. Uh, hope y'all enjoyed it. We're probably only gonna have this on YouTube. I thought. No, yeah, I don't know. We'll figure out where we put this out. But thank you all for joining us. Uh, check out our Twitter if you haven't already, Green Room UNT. Um, and, yeah, we'll, we'll talk to you all, what, on Thursday probably to preview the football game. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm.